a lot of really interesting discussion has been going on recently regarding the Vancouver Canucks defense. And I've made videos about this in the past, I talked about it in the most previous video talking about the Boston game, but they were talking in the broadcast last night about Chris Tanev. And Tanev is a name who Canucks fans maybe for quite some time now have been saying, oh, we could potentially start looking at trading him, but... I think this is the first time in a while that we're actually getting a lot of coverage on the Tan Man, and over this past span of time, we've been hearing a lot about guys like Good Branson and Hutton. There was the whole Hutton is going to Boston rumors, and then there's the whole thing about Good Branson going to the Atlantic, and now we have another thing coming out, Chris Tanev. And don't get me wrong, the Tanev thing has been mentioned probably a lot this year as well, but this is the first time I can really see people getting on this hype train because this is the first time that they're really actually talking about it as if it could transpire. So, long story short, Chris Tanev might be... this is just like really loosey-goosey kind of stuff. He might be going to the Leafs, the Toronto Maple Leafs. According to Elliot Friedman, Elliot Friedman talking about this on the broadcast actually basically said that the Vancouver Canucks would need a really special offer to trade Tanev. So, a lot of people are taking a look at this and trying to ask the question, what exactly from the Toronto Maple Leafs is a defenseman, right-handed defenseman, arguably a top five shutdown defenseman in the league, Chris Tanev, worth? What's he worth? And there were a lot of responses online and on Reddit and everything talking about both sides of the spectrum. What fans of the Vancouver Canucks would like to see back and what the fans of the Toronto Maple Leafs would probably potentially be willing to give up. And I think it goes without saying that there's a big disconnect in what Leafs fans would want to give up and what Canucks fans would expect back. Of course, if we're going to talk about what the Canucks would want back... Austin Matthews, Marner, Nylander, and Lilligren all combined along with three first round picks. That's what we would want. Of course, it's not realistic because that's just what we would want. But if you want to put in the question, what would we realistically want, things kind of change. So I'm going to give you guys my opinion, what I think I would like to see from the Toronto Maple Leafs back for a Chris Tanev, and that is just simple. I want a top defensive prospect and a pick. That's it. That is it. That's what I would like to see. If we did something like a little grin and a first for Tanev, I'd be okay with that. A lot of other Canucks fans are talking about Mitch Marner, because Marner's a name that's been thrown around the past year, talking about, is he going to get traded? Is there a possibility of him getting traded? But of course... Things kind of change as the months go along, and a lot of people are kind of speculating that Erica Branson is going to go to Toronto for Mitch Marner or something like that, but no, we're talking about Tanev here, and a lot of people are probably going to look at this video and say, oh, Legorox, you're irrational. What the hell are you thinking? Tanev is not going to fetch that much. If you ask for Timothy Lilligren and like a third or fourth round pick, that's too much. The Leafs will not be willing to give that up. That is not fair, and... Toronto fans absolutely understand that Lilligren is a more valuable player than Tanev, period. So even Tanev for Lilligren straight up one for one, that's not going to work. Okay, no, that's not what I'm talking about here. If we take a look at other right-handed defensemen who got dealt at the trade deadlines, let's take a look at Travis Hamanick last year. Hamanick, along with a conditional fourth round pick, was able to fetch a 2018 first round pick, a 2018 second round pick, and a 2019 conditional second. So that's Hamanick and a fourth for a first, a second, and a second. Hamanick and a fourth was enough to land three picks. And Chris Tanev is a better shutdown defenseman than Travis Hamanick. He's arguably a better defenseman overall than a Travis Hamanick. You could argue that, but here, we're just going to go with the assumption that Tanev is a more valuable asset to a team than Hamanick because, well, why the hell are people talking about Tanev as if he's God in this situation if he's not good? So let's talk about Tanev with this mindset. Okay, what's he worth now? Is he still worth anything less than a Lilligren in a second? Is he worth an Akita Zaitsev kind of player? And... I'm going to say that I believe that whether anything with Toronto transpires, 
it's ha- it has to be something that Benning has to say, okay, this will help our team going forward. And, at the same time, something that Lou Lamorello won't feel as a ripoff. Because we know that Lamorello is good at making trades. You could say Sashnikov for a fourth was a bad trade, but no. Sashnikov was having a really hard time cracking the NHL lineup with guys like Levo and Kapanen ahead of him. He needed a change of scenery, and he had the option to go to the KHL. So instead of going to the KHL, the Leafs trade him away to St. Louis, they get a fourth round pick back, it's better than nothing. So Lamorello really is kind of a trickster when it comes to making trades, and he'll always try to do something that benefits his team at the last second, and things kind of work out in his way all the time, so if a Vancouver Canucks trade for Chris Tanev would transpire, I would still ask for Timothy Lilgren. A lot of people are saying, yeah, no, it stops at Lilgren. Even if you're trading Tanev for Lilgren, it's Tanev for Lilgren. One for one, that is it. You cannot trade any more than Lilgren. But Lilgren is a player who's been doing really well in the AHL, and he did wonders for Team Sweden at the World Juniors, and of course, Lilligren is a good player. He looks like he'll be a good up-and-coming NHLer, but that's all he is. He played really well at the AHL level. You know who else did that? Adam Clendenning. Adam Clendenning also played really well at the AHL level. In fact, there are a lot of defensemen who do successfully in the AHL who cannot translate success into the NHL. Let's take a look at Jordan Subban. He was one of those guys. Granted, he's older than the little grin and whatnot, but the message still stands. Not everybody who's good in the AHL is going to be a definitive NHL player, which is why a 10 f for Lilligren trade, in my opinion, still has the potential to have some building blocks added on the Toronto side while still being a fair deal. If we look at a Tanev for Lilligren trade 1-4-1, one one, this is a win for Toronto because Chris Tanev is a young, right-handed defenseman who can step right into the lineup and can still provide really good shutdown plays for the Maple Leafs now. Don't get me wrong, I think that Lilligren is going to be a good player in the NHL. Of course, the analogy that I had earlier where I said that AHL players don't always pan out is true, but I believe that Lilligren will be good. But there's no guarantee for that. What does he do to a Canucks team now? He provides good, foreseeable future defense for the team going forward. But is that really the same as a Chris Tanev? Is the prospect of a good defenseman down the line that isn't a guarantee, is that the same thing that is worth a Chris Tanev? Because Chris Tanev is a guaranteed good player today, and he will be a good player for a long time. It's just his durability is the only question. The Leafs want to win now, and the Leafs could win now, they have the space and the time and the players to win now. So why would they not be willing to throw a little bit more for a Chris Tanev? This is why my projection was a prospect and a pick. A defensive prospect and a draft pick. Most favorably, Timothy Lilligren. I would be okay with a Travis Dermott and a second. I would like that a lot. But at the same time, Lilligren has a higher upside, and he's not playing on the Leafs right now. So, that means that he's less of an expendable character this year for the Toronto Maple Leafs roster. But at the same time, he's just an AHL defenseman. He's an AHL defenseman being traded for an NHL defenseman in Chris Tanev. Is that fair? You could say, oh no, it's because Timothy Lilligren will be good for a long time, he's still really young. But is that really enough to say that he is worth a Chris Tanev, because Tanev is definitely a guaranteed good-to-go player today. But Lilligren, we don't know if he's going to be a good player. If Timothy Lilligren ends up being a bust, then this would be seen as one of the worst trades in Vancouver Canucks history if it was just one for one. If Timothy Lilligren achieves his full potential, then this might be kind of worth it, but we have no guarantee about that. Adam Clendenning was another good AHL defenseman who could not crack the Canucks roster. And the Canucks sucked. So if you can't crack the Canucks roster as a defenseman, that speaks miles as to what kind of player you really are. And Chris Tanev is not one of those players. Because we know that he is a top 5 shutdown defenseman in the league. Sure, he's a little bit injury prone. But he doesn't miss more than like 20 games in a season. <laughs> Uh, I can't even I can't even keep a straight face when saying that because of course it's a lot of time but at the same time Tanev is still a good player who could help a team out and I I just 
I feel like he's worth more than just one player in Timothy Lilligren. I would personally be really willing to say Tanev for Lilligren plus. Maybe a draft pick, maybe another prospect or whatever that looks promising, but a draft pick at least. I'm saying at least like a third or a second. Lilligren and a second for Tanev. This is something that I believe the Canucks could benefit from greatly if Timothy Lilligren doesn't prove to be a good player. Because we don't know if he's going to be a good player. And that's my point. That is my point. You wouldn't say, okay, I wouldn't take a Lilligren for Tanev trade because our goal is to win now. You wouldn't say that. If you offered Tanev for Lilligren one for one, Leafs fans should be all over that. Because you're not taking away anything from your team today, and you're adding a huge piece that could really propel your team forward to win the Stanley Cup. And the catch for that is just an AHL defenseman who is playing in the AHL who doesn't have a guarantee into being an NHL regular. So, that's my argument. Hope you guys enjoyed this video for plus and like, I'll try to gaming, and bye. <laughs>